Hey Shreya, what's wrong with lawyer jokes? They're not funny. Lawyers don't think they're funny and people don't know their jokes. <laughs> oh! One of the greatest sources of frustration with lawyers is when you ask them a question and they reply with... It depends. Mm-hmm, it depends or maybe. Mm -hmm. So I wanna talk about that today. I wanna to talk about the state law challenges with domestic asset protection planning. Okay, I thought I was gonna get to tell my joke. What's your joke? My favorite joke. Then tell your joke. What's I'm brown and st sticky? A stick, Shreya. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about state laws and the challenges they present when doing asset protection planning. Is that a, an ad? No, I just Take wanted to sit. Here's the thing, there are 50 United States in our great nation? Yes, there are. Every state has their own laws. They have their own versions of what are mm -hmm. protected, what is protected. Well, yeah, what's protected, what they have to offer businesses and individuals. Some states have asset protection trust laws. There are LLC laws in every state. Yeah. Some states offer more protection than others. Mm-hmm. So naturally... To small business owners like us. So naturally what happens is people want to use those improved laws, those better laws, mm -hmm. even if they don't live in that state. For example, we saw, see a lot of people using Wyoming LLCs. Or Nevada. Because they offer more protection for single member LLCs. Mm -hmm. There are Nevada domestic asset protection trusts, but... Wyoming offers them, Alaska, Missouri, mm -hmm. South Dakota, all these different places. Texas and Florida offer unlimited homestead exemptions. It's natural that people would want to benefit from these laws. Of course. There are some people, I was listening recently to some other attorneys talking about these great laws, but they're glossing over two big issues. What are these issues? So there are two issues. <laughs> to consider when you are relying on the protection, the laws of a different state where you don't live. So the first thing is a choice of law analysis. And the second thing is the full faith and credit clause. Okay, Shreya, so let's go over what these are. Yeah. And let's talk about it. And crank it up to a 10. Uh, yeah. Imagine yourself in Washington, you go to court, something's gone on, you've got this stupid lawsuit at your door, and you're saying- Just weighing over you like a dark cloud. So you get into court and you say, hey judge, here's my argument. My assets are in an LLC that is governed by the laws of Wyoming. And those laws allow for X, Y, Z. So I would like to use those laws for my protection, please. On the other side, the person who's coming after you is gonna say, hey judge, we're in Washington. This person lives in Washington. I propose that we use the laws of our state instead of the laws of Wyoming. Boom, boom. Clashing. Clashing in the courtroom there. And who is the judge gonna listen to? It might depend on how the judge feels about it. There I know, it is. I did it. I did the lawyer thing. It depends. One of the biggest problems with our court system is there's so much uncertainty. So there's no way to mm -hmm. give a... A oh, definitive my, answer. Defin See, she's my word lady. So the judge is going to do a choice of law analysis. The judge is basically going to decide what laws are going to govern this... Clash. Clash. Ideally, if you are wanting Wyoming laws, you're hoping the judge is gonna say Wyoming. If you're on the other side, they're hoping they're gonna say Washington or the local laws, wherever right. it is that you are, because that's obviously gonna be more favorable for them. So if your strategy is relying on those Wyoming laws and the judge decides to use your local laws and set those Wyoming laws aside, your plan is gonna fail right there. You're not gonna get the protections that you yeah. were hoping for. The other issue, that we mentioned is the full faith. <laughs> the other issue we mentioned is the full faith and credit clause. That's part of our US constitution that requires the judge or the court in one state to honor the decisions, rulings, mm -hmm. judgments of a court from another state. 
For example, if you're there in that court in Washington doing your clash, clash of the lawsuits. And the judge know. says, we're gonna use the Washington laws. You don't get those protections that you wanted. A judgment is issued against you. That person can then take that judgment. They march right over to Wyoming. They can take that judgment from Washington and take it over to Wyoming and say, hey, Wyoming, I know you have these laws, but we have this judgment from Washington, so you need to follow the judgment. Yeah. And boom, slices right past those protections you thought you had. We've seen this in domestic asset protection trusts as well. That was, I believe, the first domestic asset protection trust that failed was a failure. Washington resident who set up an Alaska-based asset protection trust. Mm -hmm. Creditors sued the guy in Washington. The judge said, yeah, that's great. You have this Alaska trust, but we're going to use our Washington laws. Our Washington laws don't provide the protection that Alaska does. So you need to pay your creditor from your trust. Creditor then takes that to Alaska. They show the trustee, mm -hmm. you've got to pay this judgment. And the strategy fails. Squashed. Dreams squashed. This issue is a source of much frustration that people have when we discuss asset protection because they want this definitive answer on right. what's going to happen. They're saying, hey, I'm relying on Washington laws to protect my IRA or um, life insurance, mm -hmm. or you're relying on that other state's LLC laws to protect you. And there isn't a definitive answer because we don't know about those factors. We don't know if you end up in court, if the judge is going to follow the laws that you're choosing, that you want versus the other side. And then if you get that judgment against you, they're able to just take it to that other state and collect on their debt, collect your stuff. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, so that's why the, the domestic strategies have a big maybe attached to them, a yeah. big asterisk. A lot of uncertainty. And if you're anything like us, you don't necessarily want to live with that uncertainty. Living with uncertainty really stresses me out, Shreya. I know it does. I know it does. It you always sense. want the rules and sometimes there are no rules. So those are issues to consider when thinking about domestic strategies, relying on these states with more protection, relying on their laws. Something to think about. There's a, there's a big maybe in there.